the uh, next presenter is Professor Dong Wu yes, yes, Su yes, yes, yes. from uh, GIFT Postech. Uh, the topic is non-cubic ferrite. Okay, thank you. So my presentation title is the solubility of carbon in non-cubic ferrite, and most of the, most of the work uh, was done by my former PhD student Che Hun Zhang, who is now working in POSCO and also the Harry uh, in here. And most of you that know, know that, that, that the crystal structure of the ferrite is body-centered cubic, but in some uh, certain uh, condition, the crystallographic structure of the ferrite can have non-cubicity, which is uh, coming uh, from the intrinsic nature of the uh, displaced transformation or the uh, elastic stretching of the lattice. Uh, today, I would like to talk about the quite interesting consequence of the non cubicity in the ferrite, that is the uh, changing of the solubility of the carbon in the ferrite. Uh, starting, from, uh, starting with uh, uh, our basic understanding of the behavior of carbon in the iron, I'd like to show two uh, examples where the uh, non cubicity of the ferrite affect the uh, solubility, of, solubility of the carbon in ferrite, which is in equilibrium with the austenite or the cementite. Okay, all things uh, starting from with this uh, short email from Harry. Uh, he sent that this email around one years ago. Once he asked me why uh, that uh, asked me that why I keep all the email that I received. At that time, I did not say anything to him, but now I think he can understand the reason. Uh, he, he wrote to me that uh, there is excessive carbon in the Benetti ferrite, which is reluctant to be partitioned into the adjacent austenite. And he suggests seeing what happens uh, if the ferrite has the non cubicity. Uh, saying something uh, about the uh, non cubicity of the ferrite, it will be uh, good uh, to start with uh, uh, the. the the behavior of the carbon in the iron. All of you may know the crystal structure of the ferrite and austenite. In this slide, I draw the two uh, unicell in the same scale, but in re uh, in actually, the unicell of the ferrite is smaller than the austenite. And you know that the carbon uh, usually occupies the octahedral site in uh, both iron lattice, and the size of octahedral site is smaller than the uh, di uh, diameter of the carbon in both cases. And when you put the carbon into the ferrite or austenite, it will uh, distort the lattice. And moreover, the size of the octahedral site in ferrite is much smaller uh, in, uh, compared to that in the austenite. So uh, it leads the uh, smaller solubility in fer uh, solubility of the carbon in ferrite than the austenite. This kind of difference of the solubility of the carbon uh, between the ferrite and austenite will cause the movement of the carbon when the ferrite forms from the austenite. When the ferrite forms in the reconstructive manner, during the transformation, the concentration of the carbon in ferrite is given by the solubility, sorry, solubility limit uh, in page diagram. But when the ferrite forms in displacement manner during the transformation, at first, the carbon supersaturated plate uh, ferrite plate forms, and then after the transformation, the carbon starts to partition into the adjacent uh, austenite. And without any uh, alloying element which prevent the, uh, the cementite precipitation, then cementite will precipitate around uh, the adjacent the austenite. In 1981, uh, Harry and his coworker reported quite interesting results on the uh, distribution of the carbon in uh, alloys. And this alloys was heat treated uh, for 10 hours at 350 degrees Celsius. And this indicated the distribution of the carbon, and this uh, red line is nominal composition of the alloy. So when you look at the, uh, the carbon composition lower than this nominal uh, composition, then you can see that you can uh, consider the, the region of which carbon concentration lower than this nominal concentration is Benetti. Uh, 
uh, ferrite, and the region of which carbon concentration is higher than the uh, nominal concentration is the austenite. When you look at the carbon concentration in vanity ferrite, it is quite interesting to see that the carbon concentration in vanity ferrite is quite large compared to the solubility limit of the carbon in the ferrite. When you look at, when we calculate roughly the diffusion distance of the carbon at these temperatures, after 10 hours, the diffusion distance of carbon is reached to 80 uh, micrometers. It means that for carbon, it ha uh, carbon has sufficient time to diffuse out from the uh, ferrite into the austenite. So it is clear that the carbon, excess carbon in the vanitic ferrite is reluctant to be partitioned into the uh, austenite, even though it had chance. This weird behavior of carbon uh, has been thought to be attributed to the presence of the dislocation, which is introduced to the vanitic ferrite by accommodation of the uh, shape deformation, which is uh, uh, intrinsic nature of the displaced transformation. As you know, the carbon atoms are likely to segregate into the uh, dislocation. So uh, high density of the dislocation may be good reason for right to have excessive carbon, which is larger than the solubility limit. But recently, advance of the analysis tool allow us to analyze the carbon concentration in the vanitic ferrite, uh, which does not contain the, any dislocation or defect structures. This uh, data was adapted from the report uh, paper of the Francesca here and his, uh, her co-workers. And if you see the carbon concentration in vanitic ferrite in uh, using the XRD technique, which means that the vanitic ferrite, average vanitic ferrite, uh, average concentration, carbon concentration in vanitic ferrite. And this black line indicate, a black dot indicate the carbon concentration in the vanitic region, which does not contain the dislocation or the defect structures. When you compare these two uh, red symbol and black symbol, you can see the excess, the, the, the reason for carbon to stay in the vanitic ferrite is the major region, maybe the presence of the dislocation. But when you compare this uh, carbon concentration, which is carbon concentration in vanitic ferrite free from the dislocation with the uh, carbon concent uh, the solubility, of, solubility limit of the carbon, it is still higher than the solubility limit of carbon. So even though we can uh, say that the presence of this location may be the major reason for uh, vanity ferrite to have excessive carbon, but there is still another reason. So we to understand why there is excessive carbon in vanitic ferrite, where, uh, which is free from the dislocation, we would like to focus on the non-cubicity. Here, I draw again the uh, unicell of the ferrite and austenite. In this case, I uh, put the position of the carbon in the octahedral site. As you know, there is one octahedral site per one ion atom in the austenite but there is three octahedral sites per one ion atom in the ferrite. It means that even though we uh, fully filled uh, the octahedral site in austenite in, with carbon, then when it transformed into the ferrite, one third of the octahedral site will be filled with mm -hmm. carbon. And one of the inter interesting thing is when we put the carbon in the octahedral site of the austenite, it will stretch the octahedral lattice isotropically. But when you look at the carbon in octahedral site in ferrite, the octahedral site in ferrite can be classified into three subsets, which is depending on the, uh, the stretching direction of the uh, we, uh, due to the presence of carbon. For example, when you put the carbon in this orange position, it will stretch the lattice along X direction. And when you consider the inheritance of carbon from austenite into the ferrite, 
uh, you have to consider that all of the carbon in the austenite is inherited into one of three subsets of octahedral site in ferrite depending on the direction of the vein deformation. It is clear when you look at these uh, three cases of the vein deformation which convert uh, FCC structure into the BCC structure. For converting FCC structure into the BCC structure, the main contraction direction is G here and X here and Y here. And here, the position X is the position of the carbon in the octahedral site in the austenite. So you can see that presence of the carbon in the octahedral site in any case make the contraction difficult, which convert the FCC structure into the BCC structure. So the presence of the carbon will make the, uh, will make the BCT lattice, uh, which means the tetragonal rather than the cubic. So it is clear uh, uh, from the previous slide that diffusion risk transformation will necessarily uh, lead to the body center tetragonal ferrite. And recently, uh, Smith and his co-worker uh, experimentally confirmed that uh, there is a tetragonality in the bainetic ferrite with the presence of the carbon. Then how the tetragonality of the ferrite have an influence on the partitioning of the carbon from the bainetic ferrite into the austenite. Uh, as you can guess, any structural change in the uh, ferrite will change the size of the uh, interstitial site. And that change in the, in, uh, that change, the, the change of the interstitial site will change the dissolution energy of the carbon into the ferrite, which also affect the solubility. So to check uh, the possibility of the uh, structural change, effect of the structural change on the solubility of the carbon, we did some calculation using the first principle calculation. Uh, press principle approach it. Here, we use two by two by two super cell of the ferrite, a uh, unit cell, and we put one carbon atom in the octahedral site or tetrahedral site. Uh, in this case, the concentration of carbon is uh, around 1.38%. And for the first calculation, we used the FLAPW uh, method, which is one of the standard software for the uh, first principle calculation. This is the enthalpy change, which is associated with the formation of the iron carbon solid solution, uh, which is referred as a diso a dissolution energy of the carbon. Here, this is the case of the octahedral site. Is, this is the case of the tetrahedral site. When you just put the carbon in the octahedral site or tetrahedral site, in unrelaxed condition, the dissolution energy of the tetrahedral site is lower than the octahedral site. This is because the initial size of the uh, interstitial site in tetrahedral site is larger than that in the octahedral site. But uh, with the progress of the relaxation, the carbon in the octahedral site will push the ion atom into two main directions. But the carbon atom in the tetrahedral site should push the carbon atom in four direction. So uh, with this difference, eventually in relaxed condition, the dissolution energy of the carbon in octahedral site is lower than that in the tetrahedral site, which means the octahedral site is preferred interstitial site for the carbon as, uh, as we know. And then we calculate the dissolution energy as we change the C over A ratio, which means the tetragonality. And this graph indicates the change of the uh, dissolution energy as a function of the C over, a, a C over A ratio. At first, when you increase the C over A ratio, which means the tetragonality, the dissolution energy of the carbon is gradually decreased and reach its minimum value with the optimum C over A ratio of 1.07. And when we further increase the tetragonality, it will, the dissolution energy of the carbon will increase again. And for the optimum uh, C over A ratio 
of the 1.07, the dissolution energy of the carbon into the ferrite is decreased by one kilojoule per mole. And the optimum value of the C over ratio, 1.07, uh, uh, matches well with the reported value of the 1.06 in the 1.38 percent of carbon. The next thing we would like to do is uh, with the calculated dissolution energy, we would like to calculate the solubility limit of the ferrite in the tetra, uh, uh, solubility limit of carbon in the tetragonal ferrite. For doing this, at first we have to check the, how the dissolution energy is described in the standard thermodynamic uh, database. And here, this black and red and green line indicate the uh, molar enthalpy of the solid solution, BCC ion, and graphite, which is described in the uh, TCFP2000 uh, database. With this, we can calculate the dissolution energy of the carbon, and we found that the dissolution energy of the carbon is quite insensitive to the temperatures. So with this, we modified the description of solid solution of the carbon and ion to decrease the dissolution energy of the carbon uh, by one kilojoule per mole. And with this uh, modified database, we recalculate the uh, PACE diagram, which, uh, which describes equilibrium uh, between the ferrite and the austenite. And this indicates that when you look at the solubility limit of the carbon, then when the ferrite has a non-cubicity, which means the tetragonality, that the solubility of the carbon into the ferrite greatly increased. It means that even though we admit the, there is a, uh, the, the presence of dislocation uh, plays a major role in, uh, in excess carbon in the vanity ferrite, but we can think there is some uh, contribution from the structure change of the uh, ferrite on the solubility limit of the carbon. One thing I'd like to mention at this point is that the influence of the carbon concentration on the C over A ratio tetragonality. This is reported well, uh, this is reported by Honda and his co-worker on the uh, effect of the carbon concentration on, on the C over A ratio. They reported that the uh, C over A ratio is, is close to one when the carbon concentration is less than 0.28 percent. This is because uh, when uh, we handle the uh, low carbon steel, the general ordering temperature is lower than the MS temperature. So as soon as the martensite form, then the carbon in original position will hop to the another interstitial site, which destroys the tetragonality. So uh, I think that similar, it will be similar to the Benetic ferrite, and I think that it may be difficult to observe the effect of the tetragonality in Benetic ferrite in low carbon steel. That's why most of the report which indicate the sluggish uh, partitioning of the carbon into the austenite uh, was handled the high carbon steel of which carbon concentration uh, is close to one way percent. I'd like to briefly mention about the tetragonality which is coming from uh, the deformation. You may know that the tire code is one of the strongest material, uh, strong, strongest, strongest uh, street product. Currently, the strength level of the tire code is increased to six gigapascal. At this condition, uh, the elastic strain reached to three three percent, which is quite higher compared to the conventional uh, steers. One interesting thing is that to to obtain the high strength, the uh, people used to use the work hardening. Uh, with the severe plastic deformation. And during the uh, severe plastic deformation, uh, the cementite initially uh, exists in the uh, microstructure, gradually, gradually uh, dissolved, dissolved into the, uh, just the ferrite. And eventually, the concentration of ferrite is far larger than the solubility limit. We can consider the similar uh, situation and when, we, when you deform the uh, ferrite lattice, electric, uh, elect, uh, the elect, yeah, elasticity, elect, uh, <laughs> sorry. 
the similarly, the carbon, the, the solubility of carbon will increase similar to the previous case. So in this case, we can uh, we calculate phase diagram, which is uh, which describe the equilibrium of the ferrite and the cementite. And you can see that in, even in this case, the solubility of carbon in ferrite in, is increased. And when you look at the details, uh, solubility limit of the uh, carbon in the ferrite in low temperature region, you can see that the solubility of carbon increased by 100 times uh, compared to the uh, cubic uh, ferrite. Of course, in the, even in this case, we, we have to say that the major role of the excessive carbon in the ferrite is coming from the presence of dislocation, but we have to say that there is some uh, contribution from the structural change of the ferrite. Uh, recently, Namato Lai and his co-worker are uh, doing the similar work using the first principle calculation and they reported very similar result to us. And this is the summary of my work and I'd like to my work with this one sentence. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Su. And uh, now it's open for questions. Very nice talk, Dongo. Thanks. Uh, I just want one clarification that uh, you are talking about uh, that if ferrite is uh, tetragonal or there is a tetragonality, then it will dissolve more carbon. Now, how ferrite will be tetragonal if it is not having carbon? So, which yeah, one is that is quite first? interesting, uh, important uh, question. So, for the for keeping tetragonality, essentially the presence of carbon is necessary, but. When you cool down the sample and uh, have the tetragon uh, have the uh, benetic ferrite, the final microstructure you observe is the tetragonal ferrite with carbon. So even though the tetron, uh, initially tetragonality com uh, was coming from the presence of carbon, then when uh, the, the, the structural ferrite has a tetragonality, then the, I think that the carbon uh, it become to be reluctant to be partitioned into the uh, adjacent austenite. So it will be better when, uh, if we can make the tetragonal ferrite without carbon and then put the carbon into the uh, ferrite if the solubility is really increased. But I think that will be a quite challenging work. So, okay, okay, thanks. Okay. <coughs> Thank you, Dong. And uh, I'm a question, if how about in the Q&P process for the mountain side, is the same situation or? Yeah. When you consider the QMP, uh, most of the report on the QMP handles the low carbon. So in that case, uh, I, I think that the tetragonality will be destroyed by the hopping of the carbon just after the transformation, because as I mentioned, the MS temperature is higher than the gene order, ordering temperature. So uh, unless you use the high carbon steer, in, even in the QMP process, uh, it will be difficult to observe that, that kind of phenomenon. Professor uh, Spears. So this is very interesting. I, I wanted to ask a sort of two-part question where the two parts aren't very related. But um, <laughs> so uh, could you get the same interaction energies from internal friction data? Um, that's the first part because it seems intuitively satisfying what you're, what you're Sorry? saying. Uh, can you get the interaction energies from, from internal friction data as well? Oh, interaction energy between? The Stuck effect. Internal friction? Mm -hmm. um, so that was the first question. And the, the second question is, um, so do you think we're getting carbide dissolution in contact of ball bearings or, and, and well, are, there, are there any implications of that that you might have thought about? Yeah, start for, uh, with the second one. And I think that uh, it will be possible when, uh, to explain the carbide dissolution of the bearing, high carbon bearing still with this kind of thing because uh, when you consider the stress level uh, which is applied to the uh, bearing is really, really huge. 
So it is possible there is some uh, elastic uh, elastic stretching uh, due to the uh, uh, the applied stress during the service. It, I, I, yeah, yeah. I think it, it is possible. And sorry, the, the first question is. The, the first question, um, internal. So, um, so the internal friction measurement mm -hmm. of um, interstitial migration. Mm -hmm. um, under reversed elastic strain, mm -hmm. so the um, interstitial atoms jump into here different here. sites. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, can you get interaction energies from that that you would compare with your um, experimental results? Well, uh, all the <laughs> experimental results I was uh, uh, taken, uh, I was taking from the literature. So this is purely uh, the calculating work. Okay. Please. Okay. Uh, when you are speaking about the difference between uh, behavior of carbon in austenite and fluoride, did you take into account the well-known fact that fluoride is ferromagnetic? In terms, uh, in terms of magnetism? Yeah, yeah. When we the calculate the first principle calculation, yeah. the ferrite uh, is regarded as ferromagnetic material. Uh, along the axis type of uh, 001 as the axis of uh, even magnetization. What do you think about it? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> well uh, it's quite difficult problem to me. I have no idea. Frankly speaking, I have no idea about the magnetization. The, the thing I have to say, I, I, the only thing I have to say is that we consider the, the, the paramagnetism of the PCC when you calculate the first principle of project. Yes. Uh, uh, I understand that uh, you basically uh, make an estimation of the solubility based on the change uh, induced by tetragonality. Right. Is it correct? So in that sense, you kind of uh, reduce the effect or the importance of the entropic effects. Yeah. Still, uh, should we be worried about the entropic effects? Yeah, right, right. So in terms of entropy, we just used the, the entropy of the uh, cubic ferrite and the uh, carbon. So there is a possibility that the, the tetra and the ferrite will affect the entropy term. OK, next, please. Sorry. It's known that solubility depends on size of forming particles. Yes? And uh, solubility may be then uh, greater than uh, equilibrium if you have nanoparticles forming uh, during this process. Uh, do you take account this uh, phenomenon? Well, the, the particle, when I mentioned, is the, the atom in this, uh, in this uh, research. So I think that uh, I, I think about grains. Not atoms. I think about grains. Mm -hmm. If grains will small, then solubility may be greater than equilibrium. But not that greater than by 10 times or 100 times, right? Okay. Do we, we have got, any questions? Yeah, we, we got a question from uh, Ian. Um, he said, if I follow well, for low carbon benetic, or for low carbon bainite, the solubility of carbon is close to the known uh, value. But in higher carbon bainite, uh, is the one proposed. Uh, this means that for high carbon bainite, the formation can be diffusionless because of this solubility. But what about the mechanism for low carbon steel? Yeah, this, is, this calculation is nothing, uh, has nothing to do with the uh, formation mechanism of the bainite. Basically, uh, we assume that the displacement uh, transformation for the bainite because that with the displacement transformation bainite, the, the ferrite can have the tetragonality. So uh, the partitioning itself is nothing to do with the, uh, uh, the transformation mechanism because it is after event. Okay, okay. next um, question. 
Thanks. Uh, that's a uh, really good um, uh, presentation. Uh, my question is that uh, is your Alpha Prime Martinsite? Well, <laughs> at this moment, I, I think that it is uh, meaningless to to say that is the Martinsite or Bainite because this is just the ferrite with tetronality and with the carbon in it. And you said it's shear form or shear uh, uh, final question? Okay. So, uh, did you uh, compare the elastic property in the uh, uh, cubic ferrite and tetragonal? Yeah, I think that is quite interesting problem. So, I uh, have asked to my student to calculate that, and he did not give. <laughs> so, to me, yeah. Okay, I, th I think we have to make a stop, and uh, let's thank the final speaker and also all the speakers this afternoon uh, in thank the past much. three days. Uh, thank you for your contribution to this uh, uh, skill adventure. Uh, I think Harry will have Harry. some words to say. So, uh, just, uh, just first of all, um, my expectations have been exceeded by orders of magnitude greater than the increase in solubility of carbon. So, thank you very, very much for your participation.